Hello guys, so today in this tutorial we're going to play with PySide and we're actually gonna make a custom push button and a couple of other classes. This is a series of tutorial, okay? So, I, uh, let's actually show you what I want to do. Okay, if I run the script, so this is actually a push button, it's a big push button, you can see that from the middle line, and when I click that, you see we have an animation, then I click it back again and I have another one. Okay, so basically you can have two state of the button. Basically, you click it once, the push button you push down, you click it back once, and it, it's it's doing something else, which basically is the animation it pushing back up. Okay, uh, you we are gonna also make a a push button with just one click animation. Okay, but so for now, for simplicity, I just went online, I find a GIF, extracted the frame, and use that one. But of course you can play whatever you want, like a nice button animation, whatever, whatever you want, okay? So in order to do that, we need two classes, okay? And then we're gonna subclass again to make another one. So the first class we need is a um, subclass of the Q push button, okay? And that's we're gonna start in this video, in the first part, we're gonna start doing that, okay? And the second part. Uh, we are going to create a custom timer class to do what we need and then in the end we are going to create a subclass again the push button uh, actually our animation button class to extend the behavior in order to have two different animation play okay so let's let's get started so first of all we need to import the PySide modules, okay? So let's make a new file in Sublime. I already did that. And uh, actually, let's go to save that. And here we see we have a demo folder. And walk frame is a, here. We show you later. We have the animation uh, frames. Actually, let me show you. So these are all the frames that I previously saved. I use an online uh, um, website to do that. You just provide the GIF, and they give you a uh, a zip file with all the the frames, so it was pretty handy. So here I'm going to save my file, which is going to be like anim button, okay? Dot py. Let's call it like that. There we go. So now we know it's a Python file, so I can start and do like an import. So from PySide import Qt GUI and QT core. So, as you guys see, I'm terrible at, at typing and writing. That's why I already wrote the class for myself and I'm going to copy paste the stuff over and meanwhile explain it to you. Because there is no meaning uh, for me, for actually for you guys, stay there waiting me, making mistakes all over the place and messed up my talking, okay? So that's uh, the first things we need to import, okay? And then the first, the second things we actually need is to show up something, okay? So we are going to to create a function which is going to show us uh, the push button. So we are going to call it main, and we need to create a queue application, okay? So from Qt GUI, we are going to create a queue application. Then we are going to create like in temp. Qt GUI dot Q oops push button. You see I cannot really spell button. Oh my god, that's terrible. Okay. And that's the thing we want to show, so we're going to do like temp dot show. And then we need to execute our application like that. And we are going to call main at the end. Okay, if now so if now if we run the build, here we go, that's our push button, pretty small, but we know everything is working and the push button is working, okay? So, now we actually need to make our push button class, okay? So we are going to create a class, here we go, we are going to call anim button and it's going to inner it from Qt GUI Q push button, okay? So now, we are going to need an init because every class needs an init. So here there is already also documentation. I already commented the class. Feel free to read that. So anyway, we need the 
they need. We just need a parent, uh, so the parent widget, and then we need to initialize the the class we are subclassing. Okay, so here some people use super, but I actually don't because it's kind of hard to control what super is doing. And actually, if you go around in the forums, many many people highly suggest to don't use it. So we are going to do that things manually. So we are going to call the parent class uh, in it manually and we are going to pass the parameter it needs. So in this case uh, the class itself and the parent widget. Okay? So that's it. That's the only thing we need to do. So now we should be able, uh, able already to switch our push button with our anim button. Let's run and we actually get an error. Let's see what is it. Ooh, sure, because cutie gooey anim button doesn't exist, it's just anim button. So let's run it. Here we go. So that's our anim button. If you want to be sure, let's put a print. Like, print. Yeah. Here we go. We run it and we get yeah. So we are sure it's our class. Okay. So let's close the window. Let's get rid of the print. So now, we are going to create a couple of attribute we're going to need in the class, okay? Oops, that's the initialize and the need. So we're going to create some private attributes. So you guys should know that private attribute means that the user cannot access them from the outside. And those are really useful to store internal data that the user doesn't even have to know they exist. The class is gonna take care of that. So there is no need for the user to play with that to use them most likely in the wrong way. Okay? So, for example, if I try to access underscore underscore frames from this instance in temp, it will tell me, hey, this attribute doesn't exist because Python is hiding that from, from me, okay? So, we are going to, to use a frames attribute to store an array of Q icons, which basically are the icons we're going to show in the push button. And then we are going to store a base, a base path. I'm going to explain it really quick later. What is that? Frames path is uh, the, the path to the frame itself, the size of frames, and how many frames we have. All this after will be clear in one second, what I mean. Then we are going to also use a self, uh, a store in self underscore timer. The timer we need to use for our class. Okay? So the timer is basically the thing which is going to swap the, the image we are showing. So every x millisecond is going to swap the image. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. So for now we're just storing that to known. Okay, let's actually co copy the documentation for that. Okay, so that's pretty much everything we need to set up for now. Okay, cool. So, that's pretty easy. So the first things we want to do is actually set an image for that, right? Yeah. So, uh, now we need to think a second about that because we are going to load many images, okay? And if we have many or the images are big, it, it's, it can get like quite heavy, so our UI can start to hang a lot, okay? So that's not good. So basically we need to process those frames and we are going to cache them. Okay, so we're going to create a function which is called you know, convert frame, as you guys might have guessed. And it is it is a protect function. So protect it should mean that the user cannot use this function, but every class which is subclass this class, it actually can. In Python, the meaning protect it doesn't really work. It means that the user can call this function, but a good programmer, if it sees underscore before a function, it shouldn't call it, okay? So it should see, oh, it's something that the class is using, I shouldn't. So it's giving a hint, it shouldn't, okay? But anyway, so convert frame is gonna take a base path to our frame folder, it's gonna take a list. Of frames we want to load. So, for example, work one, work two, work three, 
Then if you want to resize the button to match the size of the frame, and then at which velocity we want to show the frames in millisecond. By default, it's 41 millisecond, meaning that we're going to display 24 frames per second, okay? And that's really simple to do. If you do 1000 millisecond divided by 24, you get 41 milliseconds. For example, 30 frames per second is 33 milliseconds, and so on, like 60 FPS is uh, 16 milliseconds, okay? So the only, that's the only thing we need to do. And this function is going to return as a process list, which basically is uh, an array of Q icons, okay? So it's going to read all the files, store in the Q icons, and give it back as the list, okay? So let's actually do that. So the first things we are going to do is create an empty array, which is called processed, and in there we're going to store our files, okay? Now, we are going to loop all the frames. We are going to use enumerate. I hope you guys know this function, otherwise you can Google it. But basically, it's going to give us one item of the list at a time and its index. Okay? So we don't have to keep a counter manually. Okay? Uh, I don't, actually, I'm not sure. No, we are actually using that. Okay, I was not sure if we were using the I anymore. But anyway, so we create a pix map our, uh, from our file. Okay? So the base path is just the path to the folder, not the file itself, okay? And then, so basically we're going to concatenate the best path, forward slash, and the file name. I'm going to print, put a print that later, so for you guys it's easier to understand. Then basically, if it's the first frame, so i equal to 0, we are going to extract the size from the from our pix map and store it in the underscore 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 frame size, okay? Then we are going to cast our pix map to a Q icon. So basically we're going to create a Q icon which take in a Q pix map. And we are going to append the the Q icon we just created into process. Okay? So that's the only thing we're going to do for now. So why don't we just create first uh, our Q icon, okay? So here we are going to create two variables. So the first is the base P, so the base path. So this is our code here. So under demo, because that's where we are in. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, underscore demo walk frames. And then we are going to use OS list directory. From this path to get all our frames. So if for now, if now I'm going to do print dot frames, it's going to print them. But we need to import the module OS. Otherwise, um, Python doesn't know about this OS module. So let's run it, and we see that it's printing out all our frames from zero to fifteen. Means we have sixteen frames. Okay. So now we actually need to process those frames. So we're going to, for now, we are just going to call temp uh, underscore convert frame. Later we are not going to use that. That's just a temporary step, okay? Converted, sorry, converted frames is equal to temp, okay? So we need to pass in. The base path, frames, and then we'll each just leave the default parameters. So if I print converted frames, you actually get known because we didn't return return processed. So if we run that, we see we get the, an array of Q icons object. That's exactly what we need. Okay. And if I print the compose path, you can actually see, guys, that what I will get is the full path to the file, which actually I get a double slash. So I can remove that, the slash from the base path, and here we go. That's our full path to the frames. Okay, so now let's just store some extra information that might be useful to the user. So, for example, we are going to store 
underscore uh, the number of frames, the base pass, the frame path, just because later might be useful. So, because for example, the user might want to do a refresh function where it's going to reload the frames from the disk. If maybe something had changed, if you do uh, a live mod to the animation, you can refresh that, okay? So it's, it's useful information to have. It doesn't occupy much memory, so it's useful to have, okay? Now, we have the frame store. We should set up the timer already, but we are not going to do that because we don't have a timer already yet. We are going to do that in the next class. Sorry, next uh, tutorial, not class, okay? So the only thing we are going to do, we need to do left, is resize the button based on the size of the, of the frames. So we call the self, which is the actually push button function, geometry. So it's starting at 0, 0. And is we, this, we are going to get the width and the height, and we are passing them. Okay. So now if I run that, we see it's the same size as our frame, but our image is not there yet. Because we didn't set the image. Okay, because this function is just preparing that for us. It's not actually setting anything. Okay. So what we need to do is have a function, a more high level function that does that for us. Okay. And it's actually the set frame function. And I'm going to put to copy and paste the function for you. So this is the definition. It takes the same arguments. And what it does. It's really simple. It's going to store the frames where the class expects them in, self, in underscore underscore frames, okay? And if we run that, instead of convert frames, it's not returning anything. Ooh, as no method convert frame, I'm actually calling it. Let's see. Ooh, sorry, that's my fault. It's underscore convert frames, okay? So I'm calling it, everything is fine, everything is working. You see it has been called because it printed out the, the path. You are actually going to remove that. Okay, so everything is working. It's still not setting the path. So we're going to create a function. Sorry, not the path, the image. So we're going to create a function because we're going to use also that later, not just here. So the function is actually called underscore set frame again. This is a protected function, so this is a hint to the user he shouldn't use it, okay? So let's paste it down here to the end, and let's see what it does. It's really simple. It takes in an index, okay? So this is the index of the frame we want to set. We are going to do a check, okay? So first of all, we're going to check if we got any frames, if we got a frame size, and if the index is actually in the range that we need, okay? So if it's inside number of frames minus one. So you may wonder why minus one? Well, this is really simple because we are starting counting from zero and not from one, okay? So what we do, we call the set icon method of the push button, passing the correct frame we want. So we access the array of frames, passing the index as an argument. And then we also set the set icon size based on our frame size, okay? So now what we do at the end of our set frames function, we are going to call the set frame function passing argument zero, okay? So we say basically, okay, you have your frames now, set the first frame on. So if we do that, there we go. We have our push button with our frame, so we are custom push buttons. But if I click, nothing happened, okay? And we are going to do that in the next uh, tutorial, okay? So see ya in the next tutorial, guys. See ya. Bye bye.